Welcome back to uh, Behind the Scaffolding. This is the addendum edition. Uh, if you recall, back in March during Preservation Month, we broadcast every week about um, preservation activities here on the estate, most specifically the scaffolding behind me, and which is up for the restoration of the west front of the mansion. Uh, we are now almost complete with that work. We are at the painting stage, and I promised you that we would come back when we um, got to that stage. So we're going to go through the steps of how we're painting and more importantly how we're sanding to create that stone appearance that Washington so wanted. I'm Tom Reinhardt. I'm the Director of Preservation and I am here with a very special guest, Marvin Amaya, who is our uh, paint, one of our painters here at Mount Vernon. And Marvin, you've been in charge of this process of, of removing the paint and now That's putting right. the paint back on. That's right, yes. And I'm very happy to be doing this. I would say that I'm, I'm so happy to be, you know, giving you an insight about how we do this and the process of cleaning and the process of painting. So I'm very excited to be sharing this with you. Excellent. All right. So um, uh, just to recap what we've done this summer. So we've put on a, a chemical stripper. We've removed 28 layers of paint that have been put on the building since 1980. Once we exposed the siding, we did repairs. Um, Happy to report now that we've quantified the, the amount of siding from the 18th century that survives on this side of the house. It's a little over 83% of the siding, of the original siding, is still in place. So that's pretty impressive, and it really testifies to the care that this building has received over the course of its lifetime. Um, so, as I said, we are now at we are now in, at the very end of the refinishing stage. So the first thing we did is we applied a mixture of turpentine and boiled linseed oil, allowed that to dry, then we caulked all the nail heads, then we um, primed it, and if you look over here, I'm just gonna run over here, you can see this bright, bright white over here, this is a prime layer right here, and then we um, uh, came, uh, then we caulked all the open uh, seams that needed to be caulked, uh, and then our painters uh, primed that caulking and then the first step was applying that first coat of paint. Right. And then what do we do? What do we do with after that? Um, we put on the first coat. The first coat of sand. Now, this is the only point. If you've been if you've been following us all along, um, I feel like we talk about this a lot. Um, but um, Washington really laid out step by step instructions on how to finish the mansion. He wanted a coat of white paint. He wanted a second coat of thick white paint on top of that once it dried. And while that second coat was wet, then throw sand at it until no more would stick. So we're following those instructions with one small deviation from them. We are putting a very fine, thin coat of sand on that first layer of paint because we're facing conditions that Washington's workers did not. And, that, and what those conditions are is that we're working with siding boards that are 250 years old now. So they've got, they've shrunk, they've cracked, they've uh, been stripped and repainted a bunch of times. So the surface is a little uneven and we wanted to smooth them out so we got as close to the starting conditions that Washington paint, Washington's painters would have had. So that's why we did what you see behind me, this very light coat of sand on it. So the sand is extremely important, is it not, Marvin? It is. It's, it's one of the most important things uh, because it's, it's a lot that we do, it's a slow process. You have to take time. Um, when you apply the paint, you have to let it dry. And then when you're gonna apply the sand, you're gonna have the sand ready. But that tells you that you need to put it in a process. It's not just, you know, get the sand and throw it. You have to wash it, you have to sift it. And that takes time. So, and then um, we're gonna have to take the time to make sure that it's ready to be used. So. And you're gonna have to use, you know, um, the amount of paint necessary to do it. So it's not too much, not too uh, little, just the enough amount of paint. Yeah. Right. So the process that Marvin uh, mentioned was um, actually working through from the sand as we get it from quarries that are from the same uh, rock formation that Washington got his sandstone. Now remember, Washington is taking blocks of sandstone and having enslaved workers pulverize them back into sand. Um, we don't do that step. What we have done is that we have identified quarries that have uh, the same exact type of sand that Washington sandstone had. 
Um, and so we have, um, we have obtained those um, from those same sorts of quarries. But as you see, when we get it, it's, it's all clumpy and it's got pieces of rock and it's got pieces of, of um, dirt, um, chunk, it's very chunky. So the first thing we do is we sift it, right, Mark? It. And then we get a much more evenly dispersed sand. It's not clumpy, it's, it's, it's recognizably sand. Then when we run it through a sifter, which is just some house, some window screen and a box, what do we end up with, Marvin? What comes, what's on top of the screen and what's below the screen? Okay, this is the top of the screen. This is what it comes up. This is the stuff that we don't need and we're not gonna use. So when Joe watching talk about sifting, this is what he was talking about. Get this out. So, so it's pebbles, get, basically. Yes, yes, yep. This big pebble. And the breeze. And then we're left with this, left, right? Yeah, yes. Um, so you can see that um, it ends up being a kind of a, um, a slight mix of larger and smaller grains of sand. Then for that first coat, we separated those out. So we sifted again to get only the finest grains of sand, which are these, right, Mark? Yes, and right. so that's what we're using for that leveling coat. Yeah. So you can come in and see how fine that sand is. It is extremely, extremely fine grained sand. But what we're using for the final coat is a mixture of that fine sand and some of the, of the sort of medium and some of the large grained sand. And that's what's going to give us the appearance of sandstone, the resemblance of stone, as Washington said. Um, that's what's going to give us that resemblance of stone, both the color and the texture of that aquia sandstone that Washington so much wanted to replicate. So, have I missed anything, Marvin? No. Nope. We got it all right. All right, so now are you ready to, to demonstrate how we do the process? I am. Yeah, we are ready. All right, excellent. So, do we need to take one of these with us? No, we got it all there, excellent. right. Can we do it here? Yep, that's perfect. I'll come out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna do one block in the So now this would be Washington's second coat of paint. Now remember, he's using lead white paint. We don't use lead in our paint anymore, but what we do use is uh, we use pigments to make sure that we're getting that creamy white base coat that lead white would have created. And you can see that that, um, that coat is pretty thick and that, that, that very fine layer of sand kind of get kind of disappears and we get just a very thick layer of paint on top. We make sure that it doesn't run. And that's what Marvin was saying. We want it just thick enough, but, um, but not too thick. Yes. And now what are you gonna do, Marvin? Now we're gonna begin throwing, casting the sand. So, if you're thinking that I'm an expert doing this, no one is an expert on doing this type of work. <laughs> so, um, the main thing is simple, practice. You know, you do it over and over until you get it right. So, what I'm gonna do, you know, it's just throwing like a baseball. Um, grab sand, cast. So you're trying to aim, you know, and more you throw is the best. You know, better you do it, um, you gotta, you know, grab it, in a way that is gonna be major, you know, most of the sand hitting the block that you wanna hit. You wanna hit the top first, and you keep going till you get it all right. So, but it's not perfection. Mansion line two, the mansion line. It's not a perfection, but you're looking for quality, looking block, solid that is gonna look just like the other one, just like, like the next one. So you throw it all, you let it sit for a couple of seconds, 
and then you do it again because there is areas that is gonna do uh, it's gonna absorb the sand more than others so then you pay attention on hitting those areas again you go back and you do it many times as you want to do it or do it many times is needed so simple process you're just looking to have an even block yeah, and I noticed, Marvin, that not only are you filling in areas that might not got a, might not have received as much sand, yeah. it's also knocking loose areas where the sand was sort of a little thicker, right? So right. it yes. really does yes. even it out, that yes. second pass. And cleaning the sand, it helps it help a lot because you're getting that dust and that dirt that is on the sand that you don't want it. So, you know, the problem of sometimes having dirt in the sand is going to absorb it faster and it's gonna give you an uneven block. Mm -hmm. So it's always, like Washington says, it's a good idea to sift it and clean it. Right. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, and, by, and by cleaning it, we're washing it. Yeah, right? we're, we're washing it. And we wash out any any uh, impurities in yes. the sand. We're washing it not only once or twice, sometimes we have to do it three times, four times, depending, you know, we want a quality clean sand. So that's what we're looking for and that's what we got finished product. So if you see, we got a block there that is, you know, almost done. If you wait maybe another 10 minutes, if you still see areas that you need to be hit again, you do it again. And that's what we do. Take your time. And you can see the difference between that first coat because you can see that you, you know, there are lighter areas, but, and it's much more yellow because you're seeing that creamy paint more clearly underneath it where Washington really wants you to see the sand and not the paint as much as the sand because he wants you to think it's stone, right? So um, you can really clearly see the difference between that first leveling coat we do and the, and the finished coat. So Marvin, do you have anything you want to add to, uh, uh, to our broadcast today or should we go to questions? Well, um, just more like, a, I would like to thank everyone to be part of, you know, give us the chance to share this with you because uh, this is not only make us proud to be doing it, but it's also um, very uh, excited to be part of the crew who is working on this, uh, be part of uh, history, as we can say. So I wanna thank you everyone. And yeah, we were ready for questions. Okay, so uh, do we have any questions coming in, Sarah? Yeah, we're getting a lot of questions, thanks guys. So Ed is wondering where the sand comes from and is it local? So um, as I mentioned earlier, we're getting it from the same vein, the geologic vein that Washington did. So, but he was getting stone from this, from quarries very close to Mount Vernon. The geologic vein actually runs all the way from Delaware down um, into North Carolina. And this particular sand comes from Delaware. It was mined in Delaware and we are um, matching it, uh, micros we matched it microscopically to sand from, from, from stones that Washington used. So we have some stones in the cellar that are of that Aquia Creek stone that Washington used in the 1770s, and, um, and some, of the, some of the sand is falling off of it. So we gathered that up and we look at it microscopically. So, um, and we identified 80, quarries, 80 possible locations. We, um, we narrowed it down to a smaller number than that. Um, and um, we, we're actually getting it um, uh, out of Delaware um, from the, uh, the, the Vulcan Corporation. Great. And Barry from Ohio is wondering how often this has to be done. That's a good question. Well, um, since 1980, they painted the house 28 times. Um, we are hoping that now that we have removed, uh, you know, this is a new process, right? In the old days, they were painting and sanding and then painting on top of it. Um, so they were always trying to keep it that very bright white that the house was in the 20th century. Now that we're using Washington's method, where really it's the sand that is driving um, the color and the texture and the finish, um, we are believing that we're gonna have to do it less. So the, the only time we've done it this way before was in 2011, and now it's 2019. So that finish lasted, um, uh, so eight years, but the problem that we were problems we were encountering was not with the outer finish that was put on in 2011, 
the problem was really with the interlayering of so many layers of paint from 1980 until 20, um, 2011, and, and that was what was causing the paint to fail. So since we're starting fresh, we're gonna see how long we can go. Um, and Marvin is also our head guy on cleaning. So over the, since 2011, when we, instead of repainting, we've actually been cleaning. Um, and how do we do that? We actually, we clean the sand and finish. So how, yes. tell us how we do that. Uh, simple method. We don't uh, create more harm to the wood when it comes to cleaning. So the cleaning is simple, peroxide. That's what we use. It's spray peroxide and scrub. It's just simple as that. Um, but, you know, you have to take your time, like always. Um, you have to do a small areas uh, at a time. And, um, but that's it's a simple method that we use. Yes. Because what we, we use the peroxide and that helps to sort of neutralize any um, atmospheric pollution. And remember, we have a coal burning blacksmith shop just up to the north of us by a few hundred uh, feet. And that is of course depositing um, dirt as it would have in the 18th century. Um, and then we also, you get biological growth. You might get mold, you might get mildew, you might get you know plant matter starting to grow. And by doing that treatment, it cleans it up and freshens it. So we're gonna be doing that with some frequency um, and hopefully not painting for at least another 10 years to start, maybe yeah. maybe longer. Knock on wood, Tom. We're gonna be yeah. very, yeah. knock on <laughs> stone, stone wood. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, Amy has a question. Uh, does the sand provide additional protection for the wood against the elements? Absolutely it does. Um, that's part of the reason why we have that 83% survival rate. And Washington himself, when he's describing the process um, to someone else, he says that it's for two reasons. Durability, that's the first one he lists, and then the second is the resemblance of sand. Um, in the 18th century, they would, um, they would uh, mix in sand sometime into paint for application, sometimes throw a light coating of sand for exterior applications um, because it did help, um, help uh, give the paint a longer lifespan. Great. So we have a lot of really nice comments. Thank you to Marvin Thank for explaining you. what you do. Thanks for explaining this process. A lot of people didn't know how it worked. Um, Kevin is wondering if there's a difference between sand casting and rustication. Yes, yes, Kevin, there is, right? Um, so rustication is the process of cutting the siding boards to look like stone blocks. So all of this where you see the bevel notches and the top and the bottom are beveled off, so you have this flat face in the middle, that's rustication. And you do that to the wooden siding board. Um, the sand, the, then you paint and sand on top of that, um, that rusticated siding, um, and that is the sand painting or the sand casting process. But the rustication is the treatment of the wooden boards to make them look like stone blocks. Great, and Clay is wondering how long does the process take to resand the entire house? Well, uh, we don't know how long it's going to take to resand the entire <laughs> house yet, but we've. How long did it take to do the first, uh, the first two stores, the, the upper part of this wall? Well, um, that depends on what you're doing. The first coat, it will go faster, a little faster. It might take uh, two, three weeks uh, to do two levels of dimension. But it's only because you are going, uh, just doing the first coat, it means that it's gonna be light, that it's gonna be, you know, uh, that you know that you're gonna have to come on top and you have to give it enough time to dry. Uh, so you have to do it just lightly and it'll take you less time. But the second coat is gonna take a little longer. You want quality and you wanna give it, you know, that look that we're looking for. So yes, uh, depending on what we're doing and that's how long it's gonna take. We would say, you know, the whole mansion, um, we're not sure yet, but we'll answer that question <laughs> soon. Yeah, when Great. we finish the, the west side, we'll have a better idea on how long yeah. the other three sides will yeah. take as well. But, but again, the whole process, you know, we started on April 1st, so we're moving along and we did, a, you know, we did a lot of, a lot of stripping, a lot of repairing, and I guess we started painting, I guess probably, um, I'm looking over at we started in June, so it's now you know at the end of September. So that was priming, first coat sanding, second coat sanding. You know, it's so it's, it's taken a couple of months. Yeah. Great. And Al has a good question. Does the sand that falls get collected and reused? Yes. By the way, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We are working on that, um, and we're getting better on doing it. 
and depending on when the day um, we get, you know, uh, to be a, we'll be able to, you know, collect the sand more accurate. Uh, but uh, we're working on that every day, collecting it and using it again. Um, it's just a uh, matter about doing it, you know, uh, day by day. But uh, yeah, we're collecting it and we're using it again. And we actually build, if you just go over here, we built these little tunnels for our visitors to go in and out of the house so they don't get, um, they don't end up getting covered in sand while the, while the painting and sanding is going on. So Jeanette said, so the mansion wasn't bright white, kind of a question, kind of a statement? Uh, no, it never was bright white because okay. they couldn't make a bright white paint, oil-based paint, in the 18th century. They just didn't have the technology to do it. White has gotten successively white paint has gotten successively whiter and brighter. In the 19th century, with the inclusion of zinc into the into the uh, recipe, and then in the 20th century, by the addition of um, uh, titanium oxide into the recipe, so that made it whiter and whiter. And in the, they knew that they sanded, they knew that you know, but they were using a very bright white, commercially available paint in the 20th century explains why everybody of a certain age remembers the mansion being very white. And when the color changed in 2011 to this off-white to tan, um, it was not only the change in the color of the paint, which went back to the creamy white it originally was, it was the adopting of Washington's process of encrusting that paint with the sand. And the sand is what drives the color. Washington wants it to look like the Aquia sandstone that was that was available to him, and, and that's why it becomes this, this kind of tan color. Very good. And we have another good question. Are there any other homes from the same time period that also use sand casting? Well, there, were, there certainly were. Um, there were, as I said, it was not uncommon to mix sand in or to give a light cast of sand over exterior paint. Um, but this process, now, now mind you, we have siding boards from the 1750s that have that light coat of sand on them, and it sort of looks almost, you know, maybe not, even not as much as this first fine coat that we put on. It's a very, it's, you can feel it, you can see it, but there, it's, it's kind of dispersed over the surface of the block. So we have those from the 1750s. When Washington gives his instructions in, this, in 1793 about how he wants the, 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 um, the three-step process um, to be done, he has to give instructions, right? So this is something that his painters don't know how to do. So this is something new that he has chosen to do in the last decade of his life. Very good. And we had some people join in a little late. They just want a reminder that this is wood yep. being covered with sand. Correct. And somebody also asked, what is holding the wood in place back there? So um, just like in almost any house in America now, this is a frame house. So you build a frame using corner posts and studs that make up the wall. And then they're actually placing the boards up against those wooden framing members and they're nailed in by iron nails. And those nails would have been made in England. Washington buys hundreds of thousands of nails. They come over in kegs um, and then they're being used um, to uh, adhere uh, that uh, fasten those siding boards to the exterior of the house's wooden frame. So that's what's holding holding them all off. Um, so should we do one more? Do you want? Do we all? Do you want us sure. to go out? We yeah. Can be doing one more block. Let's do it. So people who came in late can see the process. And I can actually continue to answer questions while we oh, have sure, sure. while we have uh, something interesting to watch other yeah. than me. <laughs> You're always interesting, Tom. Uh, so we do, actually this is an appropriate question, do we know how much sand is used to cover the west front? Um, yeah, I can kind of like, not an accurate, but I can give you an idea. It might take uh, about 80 gallons of sand wow. doing just for the second coat. All together it's going to be about, I would say 150, 150, 160 gallons. First coat, second coat, all together. Yeah. Um, and when we do the second, if we, if we have to paint in the future, you know, um, if we were ever to, to repaint and resand, we wouldn't have to do that first coat, second coat necessarily. That first coat was just to smooth out the boards themselves. Um, but we actually purchased um, 242 tons of sand 
um, in preparation for this project. The reason why we got such a large amount of sand is because uh, between 2011 and 2019, the sand that they used in 2011 was no longer available. We don't want to have that problem in the future, so we went ahead and bought in bulk, um, and we're put we're storing it for future um, for future future use. Great. And you answered this question already, but uh, for those that joined, Megan is wondering how long you anticipate this layer that you're putting on right now lasting. Uh, well, we're hoping at, uh, at at least 10 years. Great. And then um, we had someone actually on Instagram ask how long this process takes. They visited back in uh, March and they saw you all working. Right. So. Um, we, we started early in the spring, and we will be finished, uh, we believe, on the 7th of October is when um, scaffolding will begin to come down. So all painting will be completed. We'll have a little bit of uh, a few odds and ends to do. We'll have um, a couple of shutters that we'll, we, don't, we don't think will be finished, so we'll be installing shutters um, um, as, they're, as they're finished. Um, we will also have a couple of uh, window sash that are going to go back in. They won't be completed and they'll go back in from the interior rather than the exterior. But for all intents and purposes, the entire west front will be completed by the middle of October. Okay. And when are you all going to be doing the other sides of the mansion? Well, 2020, um, in uh, early spring 2020, we will be starting the north and south ends. We're going to do those two short sides of the mansion um, in one year. And then 2021, we will do the east side. All right, now we got so, some sanding. Yeah. Now we so got we're some ready action. Crash. Yes. Um, so if you just join uh, now, um, this is what I'm going to do is just casting the sand and trying to get this look, look just like this. This is the big so, test, Marvin. <laughs> this is where everyone's going to judge. Yes. There. Um, like I said before, um, trying to hit the top part first. And here, with, you know, enough force to make it stay in place. So, trying to make it look even, same as the other one. Because we're using the same product, it should, and it's supposed to look just like the other block. And do it and wait. Couple seconds. Doesn't matter if you wait five seconds, five minutes, five seconds, it's just depending how, you know, you want it to look. So this block is almost laid down, but you go back and you do it again. Like I said, many times you need it. And one of the things I've noticed, Marvin, with um, watching this process over the last couple of weeks is that um, the color changes, right? When it's first applied, it's lighter. Yes. And then as it absorbs the paint, it darkens up because the sand gets wet. But then that lightens up again as the paint dries. And so we can, you can actually see as we move down the house, you can see the areas that they painted recently. And it, it looks a little splotchy at first, and then it all evens out, and you can't even tell the difference. Well, Ed said it must be an honor to work on this project. So I'm sure you agree. Thank you guys it, it for really doing is. this work. It is an honor. Um, it, you know, we love, everybody here loves um, what we do. And we, um, and we are very honored to be able to take care of Washington's home um, uh, as stewards uh, for the, the, the nation and the for um, future generations. Uh, we want to we want to do our job well so that this place is here in another 250 years. Yes. Um, so thank you, Marvin, very yes, much. Thank you. We really you. appreciate you joining yes. me today. Yes. And um, we are going to be um, uh, coming back in October for some uh, Archaeology Month broadcasts. And um, we are going to um, uh, be talking to our archaeologists about some of the work that's been ongoing. Uh, I'll give you a little sneak preview. We have discovered yet another building that was here during Washington's time, but they came off the landscape before his death. So you'll get a peek at that. Um, so thank you again for turning out for this addendum edition of Behind the Scaffolding. I'm Tom Reinhardt, Director of Preservation, here with Marvin Amaya, yes. our crack sand thrower. <laughs> Um, and we, we welcome any questions that you might think of later and just send them in to Ask Mount Vernon. Thank you.